Hi, I'm Alan. My normal co-host, Dennis Sharon, is taking some time off and joining a sabbatical from work. His sabbatical is part of a program we've developed at our firm to give our leaders a chance to disconnect, refresh, and come back invigorated. Since Dennis is out, we're going to rotate with some guest interviewers. Today, I'm joined by my fellow shareholder, Rachel Godwin. Rachel and I will be talking with Lucy Gafford, and Lucy is the Executive Director of the Mobile Arts Council. You'll get to hear about leadership from the perspective of an artist who is working to promote art in our community. Welcome to Playing Above the Line. We're a podcast that takes a peek into the daily lives of community and business leaders. Each week, we uncover different views of the path to growth, leadership, and achieving success. I'm Dennis Sheeran. And I'm Alan Cave. Dennis and I are both shareholders at Hartman, Blackman, and Kilgore. We're a full-service accounting and business consulting firm. As CPAs, we've had the unique opportunity to work with many different leaders and decided we wanted a way to share their incredible stories that we've learned along the way. Well, Rachel... Another day, another podcast. How are you? I'm good, Alan. How are you doing today? I'm excellent. And we are uh, honored to have Lucy Gafford. And uh, Lucy, well, thanks for coming to join us for a few minutes. Thank you for inviting me. So start out and just tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do now currently, and then uh, we'll go from there. So I am a freelance artist and an arts administrator. I was recently uh, promoted to the executive director of the Mobile Arts Council. So I'm doing art full time. Uh, on my own, as well as uh, representing others in the community. Just so art. So how did that come about? I mean, did you always know that you wanted to be an artist, or is it something that just kind of jumped on you, you know, later in life? How did that work? Growing up, art was always innate in my family. From childhood, my my mother was very artistic. Uh, she would always have us uh, do the Do Die Day parade every year. I don't know if you guys are familiar okay. with that. It's uh, this animal parade where we would dress up all of our animals and ourselves, make these little floats you know, march around downtown and we would win all the time, you know. Uh, That's great. I, and she was always very encouraging, you know, towards me uh, for being artistic. And so uh, my dad's a musician. Um, he's an engineer full time, but he, he always was playing music in the house. And so I was always surrounded by this. It was always a very positive uh, thing. And um, so it came very naturally that I was interested in that and came to pursue that as a profession. So tell us a little bit about the Mobile Arts Council. What goes on there? So we're a private nonprofit. We were established in 1955 by the Junior League of Mobile and initially as a a resource for information for the arts for all of the Mobile community. We re-grant funding throughout uh, the community on behalf of the city and the county um, to organizations like the Symphony and the Opera and the Gulf Coast Ethnic and Heritage Jazz Festival, as well as, um, you know, provide that that information. You know, we have a free arts newsletter that we uh, send out every week that lists all the different arts, you know, events happening in the community. Uh, we really are here as like a, a sounding board and a, a resource for the artists and arts organizations here in Mobile. So your role now as executive director, you're, you've got the artistic side, but now you're kind of having to handle the administrative yes. side and, and merge the two together on a daily basis. Yeah, and I've had my hand in that uh, throughout uh, since graduating from college. I kind of self-managed myself when I used to be an instructor at, at Paint and Pals for years. And then after that, I started working through the Arts Council through their Charting New Directions program. Okay. Um, so I used to serve just as a teacher at a couple of the boys and girls clubs in the area. And then I came to um, become the educational coordinator for that program. So I was coming up with the lesson plans and um, monitoring the teachers and getting their materials and all that on behalf of the Arts Council's outreach program. Then after that, I started working as the program um, coordinator for the Arts Council. And I moved from doing that teaching capacity to working full time as an administrative role. And through that, I would do um, what I've been doing for the past years. I'm working with the Arts Council managing the vendors for Art Walk and Market in the Park, coordinating our monthly exhibition series, which we hang the work and contact the artists, do that each month, as well as educational programs with the State Council for the Arts. Uh, We do a poetry competition each year, as well as uh, the Visual Arts Achievement Program. So I've been doing management type things, Mm -hmm. but more so with contracted type positions. Sure. And um, with educational programs rather than managing, you know, employees underneath me at a full-time basis, which is the difference that I'm going with now. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a different dynamic when it you is. kind of step your way through the ranks. Absolutely. I'm just wondering how it is to, to manage a bunch of artists because, I mean, we're we're a CPA firm, and so I'm, we manage a bunch of people who are very by-the-book numbers-oriented, you know, yes. process-driven and that kind of thing. So I just... 
it would be interesting, I would think, to, to, to manage a bunch of artistic folks. It's just it's kind of different to me, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, gets, it gets tricky sometimes. Um, I feel like that's not necessarily true about um, that all artists are these kind of There's stereotypes type. in anything. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like not dependable, crazy, right. you know. Uh, that's not true. It it's kind of goes the same for everybody. Some We're artists not boring are, accountants are, either. Are, yeah, no, yeah. No. Well, I think it's interesting because you said your dad is a, an engineer. Yes. But he also plays music. Yes. So, I mean, that's kind of, those are two kind of, in my mind, diametrically opposed things. Because most of the time I think of an engineer as a straight laced, you know, just kind of very by the book rigid, that kind of thing, and not really up there, you know, jamming on Friday well, night. Well, the, the thing is, there's different styles of music, you know? <laughs> I mean, there's some that are, they're more by the book, and then there's like right. jazz, where yeah, yeah, you're yeah. kind of free flowing. So the same goes with art. Um, personally, I, you know, I don't have a very loose style. I'm, I'm pretty uptight with and realistic with what I what I depict in my paintings. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So maybe that that goes in hand with being more of an organized artist versus, you know. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Maybe, I don't know. Gotcha. Well, speaking of your art, we learned something when we got to the studio today about your hair art. <laughs> oh, yeah. As someone with very long, thick hair, I am fascinated by this. And you understand. I, uh, I do understand. <laughs> it had never occurred to me, but but it's interesting. Uh, I saw some pictures. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so that, that is outside of the realm of, of my arts council work. But that, yeah, that's just something fun I do on the side, the shower hair masterpieces. That is just uh, great. Tell me how this hair art, shower art works and, and how you got inspired to do that all right whenever you're showering if you have long hair it will have a tendency to fall out and get tangled up in your fingers especially i have curly hair so i don't brush it very often so i get a plethora of it when i'm showering sure so uh in an attempt to prevent it from going down the drain you'll put it on the wall so guys if you're ever wondering why you have a big clump of hair on the wall every time your wife you know takes a shower thank you that never known that's why that's why we're trying to save the drain Anyway, so I'll take that clump and then I'll take each individual strand and turn it into like a contour line drawing. And then when I'm done, I'll take a photo, hashtag it, shower hair masterpiece, wipe it off the wall and throw it in the trash. So it becomes a tiger. It becomes a (laughs) face of someone. Yeah. 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 That is one of the coolest things I have ever heard. (laughs) We found some pictures actually on on Twitter. So we'll uh, link those uh, in the show notes and people can go and and check that out. But that is that is very, very cool. (laughs) Thanks. But I got an I got a how's that happen? I mean, you're just kind of like one day like, oh, I got this here. I can either put it in the garbage can or I can make a, you know, a a picture. I mean, how does that come about? I, I like I like to entertain sometimes and i'll you know i'll purposely post things on social media that that i think people might get a kick out of and that's really how that got started always when you shower you have the long hair gets stuck in your fingers you put it on the wall it kind of represents something every once in a while so i turned it into a picture and posted it on twitter It's, it's a gag and then i kept doing it because i got intrigued by the process yeah. i was like i could really make a nice looking drawing with this and maybe you know That's maybe people funny. people will enjoy that and i just, i've been doing it for years well even to the point where you kind of caught the attention of jason Siegel, right uh, <laughs> at, at some point <laughs> Uh, no, he just happened to be in town and and stopped by the arts council to check out the gallery. So okay. I, I did a, I did a portrait of him, but I don't know if he's ever actually seen it. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a much yeah. better story. You should have said, yeah, man. He, yeah, he oh yeah, he loved like it. I, he no, follows me on no, Twitter. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He doesn't. But I I did get uh, featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not this year for the shower hair oh, masterpieces that's awesome. though. That's so I'm, I'm officially a freak because I'm I'm in the Ripley's book. So that's that's a childhood dream right there. Well, I don't know if Jason listens to this podcast, but if you do Jason give Lucy a follow on, on Twitter <laughs> because the hair art so talk a little bit about some of the specific programs that more in depth I guess that the council does I know that you mentioned art walk and, and things like that what what do you have going on and what are, what are some of your bigger programs throughout the year um so the things that people I think are the most familiar with are the things that we partner with the city of Mobile special events department on so that would be art walk and then market in the park um, market in the park is seasonal throughout the fall and then like spring and summer And then uh, Art Walk is the second Friday of every month. And uh, with Art Walk, we intentionally change the exhibitions each month so that there's something different and it gives more people a chance to be able to showcase their work in a professional setting. In addition to those, we, like I mentioned before, the educational programming, Charting New Directions, is our uh, outreach program. And we change that up each year. Um, In the past, we've been working with uh, the Strickland Youth Center as well as the Boys and Girls Clubs of South Alabama. We do fundraisers throughout the year because we only get so That's much. A, yeah, you well, know. I was going to ask you, how's the, so how are you funded? I mean, obviously we, we get some get... funding from the city and from the okay. county, but about half of what we need to exist is generated through fundraising. 
And then a lot of the money that we get from the county, we re-grant to other organizations. Sure. Well, Lucy, talk a little bit about the history of art in Mobile. I mean, who stands out to you as maybe one or two uh, kind of prolific great artists in, in, in the city? The city's history. First comes to mind are, you know, we work downtown, so I see a lot of the, the sculptural work uh, done by like Casey Downing and Bruce Larson, as well as there's even a sculpture by Charles Smith in front of the, the government plaza. Okay. And um, I think a lot of people aren't as familiar with the sculptural work as they are, say, like with, with the paintings and, and, and mural work, but um, they're very prolific. Casey has work all over the city. My favorite piece by him is is the portal that's uh, right in Cooper Riverside Park. Okay. And uh, Bruce, of course, ha- has these super cool, like, gargantuan sculptures that utilize, uh, like, recycled materials, mostly, like, rusted metal. And uh, he's got uh, some bike racks, you know, up and down Dolphin Street, okay. uh, as well as he has that big interactive uh, butterfly piece that's in front of the Mobile Botanical Gardens that used to be in front of the Art Museum. Very good. Yeah. Oh, good deal. Well, let's look to the future of the arts in the Mobile area. Who are some up-and-coming artists that people might want to check out? So some up-and-coming artists, well, speaking of sculpture, uh, April Livingston, uh, she recently did the uh, sculptural bust remake of Kazula, and she's an up-and-coming artist. She also teaches at the University of Mobile. We feature up-and-coming artists each month, you know, at our gallery space, but uh, Ginger Wo Chan is... Is one that comes to mind. She she's a painter. Uh, we're working to get a new mural project by her uh, done downtown within the next couple of months. Uh, so I would look out for that. Very interesting. Well, let's circle back on the poetry out loud and talk a little bit about Garrett Whalen from Baker High School yeah. because I know that you're probably pretty proud of this little. Of this I'm guy, very right? proud. I'm very proud. So uh, I have been the sole person at the Arts Council who's been dealing with uh, the poetry out loud programming each year, and it takes a lot of work. We reach out to all the district one schools um and we host the finding your voice workshop where the kids uh, get to practice reciting their poetry as well as uh, an analyzing and writing poetry component uh, to their lessons and then we uh work with the library the ben may main library downtown they're awesome they let us use their uh their auditorium each year to uh have the performance and uh, Garrett was with Baker High School, and I've been working to try to get more of the local schools to participate, and they finally participated this past year, and at the state finals, he won the whole thing, which That's was great. fantastic. And then another one of our students came in uh, in second place, too, so uh, both of them got money for their school libraries, and then Garrett got an all-expenses-paid trip to Washington, D.C. to compete in the national competition. Well, that was great. Yeah, was awesome. and there's, there's an original uh, poetry component where – students can write their own and then there's the anthology where they recite famous poetry like like Shakespeare okay yeah well that's pretty impressive yeah it's a great opportunity for those that are interested in in creative writing and especially for theater people oh sure because it's essentially like you're doing a monologue right. on stage well how has that changed because I remember back in, in Rachel I mean she says I'm old and I'm not that old I mean I'm <laughs> you know I'm older than she is I'm not that old but I mean you know there were, art was offered in in high schools across our you know, area and that kind of thing at every school. But is that something that's still prevalent? Because I know that once you start cutting programs, I mean, I would think that the arts are easy to cut because they're not math and science and that kind of thing. So Yeah, they're typically the first thing. And a lot of the schools in the Mobile County area are are fortunate enough to have arts programming. Um, But we want to get together with the schools, examine what is currently happening at each of them, what's available. I know a lot of elementary schools don't have um, art classes uh, here in Mobile County. And um, a lot of them that do will have a a rotating teacher who Mm -hmm. only comes, you know, every few weeks and only works with certain classes throughout the year, which is kind of hard on the teacher and keeps it where not all the students have the availability of, of having art. Um, so that's something that I want to work on in this position is is getting together, working more with the school system to see if there's anything that we can do to put put teachers in all the schools. Well, you talked about a little bit about how you've moved up through the ranks with the Mobile Arts Council. Kind of what's your thoughts on leadership and how your style has changed maybe through the years? Because you learn as you go. <laughs> yeah, you so do. You tell do. us a little bit about that. I think the most important aspect of leadership, in addition to just being very organized and, and knowing what you want to do, is is actively listening and being open and honest with what you're doing. I think that that is really the key to having a successful team, especially when you have such a small staff. Sure. Um, really, there, there's no secrets. Everybody's kind of working together on each project you do, even if you have one person heading it up. So, 
yeah, just keeping that line of communication open, I think is the most important thing. Absolutely. So what about mentors? I mean, is there anyone who's influenced you as far as your, I mean, it could be leadership style, it could be your art. I mean, is, is, can you point to somebody or, or multiple somebodies in your life that, that have had an influence there? Gosh, honestly, uh, my husband, okay. uh, Mike Castranis, has been incredibly influential for me. Um, he's always my, my sounding board anytime I have any any questions or qualms about something. Uh, he's incredibly honest and very rational. And, um, and yeah, he's, he's kind of my go-to. You know what does he do? Is he in, in, in the art field or what does he do? We met in college and okay. uh, he was a graphic design major at, at okay. South, but he um, he does more like computer engineering work. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. Well, so look five years down the road. So what do you what's what's your what's your vision for the Mobile Arts Council as you as you kind of look forward and uh, guide it in its next uh, next few years? What do you want to see there? So in the past, we've been very visual arts heavy. You know, regarding our, our programming and what we've been able to do. Uh, with impacting the arts community. So I want to be able to move into assisting more with the performing arts aspect of things. Um, so working with theaters and dance and, and, and music groups and figuring out ways that we can create more programming uh, and more opportunities for them in the community. Um, I see us having a bigger staff than three people, maybe uh, <laughs> someone to handle performing arts versus visual arts a bigger office space, even though right now we're in transition and we're moving into a new one, you know, at the end of this month. And I would like it if everyone in the Mobile area was aware of the Arts Council and everything we do and Mm -hmm. and would, you know, take advantage of us and the services that we can provide them. Obviously, you spend a lot of time with public outreach and schools and that kind of thing. But uh, at the end of the day, how how important is are, are the arts to the community? Is it the sense of community to uh, to a city and its its vitality and and that kind of thing. What are your what are your thoughts there? I think people just take advantage of the arts, you know. And I think a lot of people when they think of art, they just think of like someone who does a traditional painting on the wall. But right. really, it's it's all encompassing. It's what makes us uniquely human. It's what enables us to empathize with each other. Art is really the only universal language. You can see a film, and no matter what language you speak, you can be moved by it, or a, or a painting, or a dance, or a song. Sure. You know, and um, so for the sake of humanity, the arts are incredibly important. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's one of the very few mediums too where I mean I can get something totally different out of it than than Rachel. I mean, yeah. it speaks to me in a totally different way than it speaks to her. But it's the, but it, and it's the same piece or the same piece of music or the same you know painting or whatever. Yeah, um, and that's why, you know, being taught art in schools is so important because um, it is one of the only subjects that doesn't have a concrete answer to it. it. You know, it encourages creativity and to think differently. And, you know, you're not necessarily wrong if you think this painting means something different than, you know, the other person in the room. Sure. Very good. I've got to ask this question, and I was looking at your bio, and it says that one of your hobbies is collecting and fixing old arcade machines, which I think is very cool, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So how did that happen? And then tell, what, tell us a little bit about your collection and, and what you have and maybe what your, what's, what's your prize possession in the arcade <laughs> uh, space. So, so this is more of, of my husband's hobby, but, okay. but I've been roped into it, and I really enjoy <laughs> it. Like, I have to accept it and enjoy it for, for us just to, to get along. One of those and things. It, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's fantastic. I love it now. And we've, we've developed a lot of uh, close friendships now through through this arcade hobby. It started with uh, my husband's a uh, big fan of Galaga. And uh, he had a machine whenever we first got together, he purchased one. And um, we recently bought a house and it's split level. So we had a little second living room downstairs. So he really had been wanting to get some more uh, games. So I was like, okay, we can make this this downstairs room the arcade. So he, he uh, has purchased a lot of these older arcade machines. And then I work with him to to fix them up, he'll get them, you know, just for like a few hundred dollars and, mm-hmm. and maybe the bottom of the cabinet got water damage. So I'll work with him to rebuild that and repaint and fix them up. And we've accumulated close to 15, I think, oh, games wow. now. Yeah. My favorite is skee ball, which I had yeah, to buy that. Yeah. I'm more of a re- redemption game person. So uh-huh. just the physical, <laughs> you know, dummy, <laughs> dummy games, nothing that takes real skill, but we have like Galaga and Centipede, Mario Brothers, Vanguard, Scramble, Popeye, Street Fighter. It, okay. The list goes on. Yeah, that's a neat hobby. 
So is there a book you're reading right now or have you read a book that kind of inspired you or maybe a podcast or a blog or something like that? We like to share reading, but you may not be a reader. So you yeah, tell me. yeah. So I, I'm a, sh- a little shame to admit that I have not sat down and read a book in a very gotcha. long time. I have not. I'm always I'm always staying super busy. And when I'm not working on on Arts Council things, I'm in some other creative endeavor. And yeah, I haven't taken the time. But I do like to listen to podcasts i uh, really enjoy watching ted talks uh okay so more more short-lived things you know reading articles online about about art projects that were successful in communities um i like to keep up with the state council and the arts with all their their social media and the articles that they post uh, what's your favorite podcast right now i really like radio lab a lot that's one that okay. i consistently I heard that one. listen to okay it's an npr podcast yeah. and it uh the topics that they cover uh vary drastically from you know some It'll be about rabies and someone who got bitten by a bat and survived uh, <laughs> despite being in a coma for years to uh, to professional wrestling and the ins and outs of, of that. Yeah. So it's, it's always interesting. And I like to kind of listen to that. <laughs> Never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Well, so uh, you, you spend so much time immersed in the arts for your vocation. Um, and of course, you have your, you know, your hair art that's a hobby and that kind of thing. But what are some other things you like to do kind of outside of outside of the art realm and, and uh, you know, when you're not making pictures with, with hair? Uh, I like to stay physically active. Uh, so I, I run, I like to play soccer. Hadn't played in a while, but I love it. Karaoke, I'm a big fan. Oh, yeah? Big okay. fan okay. of karaoke. Working on the arcade stuff. Costume making is, is something yeah. on the on the side just do for fun for myself that are there any good karaoke bars in mobile or i mean where where do you where do you karaoke i mean is that something that you kind of go out with with the gabriel's is fantastic for karaoke of course uh the music box i used to go there and do and they opened up i hadn't been back since they've been doing karaoke there so that's really fun i do have a karaoke machine in our garage (laughs) so we'll we'll have karaoke dance parties so your husband's working on arcade machines you're you're singing karaoke (laughs) in the garage that's that's a that's a happening place we might come by and visit sometime yeah yeah, I do have one question before we before I ask my my final question, and this is something that just always intrigues me because I'm not an artistic person. But do you think? I mean, is there does that exist in all of us somewhere, or are, are people like me just hopeless and there's no possible <laughs> way? I mean, I can't draw, can't paint, can't do. You know, I did take pottery in, in high school or in college. I made a bunch of bowls. I could never get them to like be vases or anything like that. They yeah. just all turned out to be bowls. But um, is that something that that is that can be tapped in all of us, or do you think that it's um, Think it is. I think it's something that can be tapped, but it has its limitations. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, certain people are definitely more inclined. That's your to, nice way of be, just telling me, just forget it. And there's your 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 lost cause. No, Sorry, you're, you're not. You know, you're not. Some people uh, require more training. That that's for sure. Yeah. I think I would be in that category for sure. So, well, Lucy, thanks so much for um, joining us. This has been this has been a lot of fun. I do have one last question that I, that I want right. to ask. And so, if I could give you the ability to hop in a time machine and go back into time and to apprentice or work for or work with any artist in history, who would you choose and, oh, and why do you think that would be? Wow. Hmm. I love it when I stump I, people. That's well, good. there are certain artists that I love their work, but I imagine working with them would be <laughs> horrific, like Salvador Dali. Like yeah, I imagine yeah, like yeah, that yeah. would... He's, he's one of my favorites, but I, I don't think that would be a pleasant experience. Uh, you know, one of the masters, you know, like Michelangelo or Da oh, Vinci sure. or, you know, someone who was very prolific and just ingenious with, with what they did, mm-hmm. you know. Sure. Um, but good question. I'm going to think more about that. Excellent. Very yeah. good. Well, Lucy, thanks so much for joining us. This has been great. Thanks, Thank Lucy. Thank you. Thank you. If you live in the local area, be sure to check out the Art Walk on the second Friday of every month. Learn more about this and other art-based programs by visiting mobilearts.org. Well, thanks for listening to our podcast today. To never miss an episode, subscribe to Playing Above the Line at iTunes and anywhere else you get your podcast. And be sure to leave us a rating. We'd love to know what you think about our show. To contact us or to stay connected, follow us on social media at HBKCPAS on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for listening.